And welcome to you if it's your first time with us online. I pray that you would find it an encouragement. Our theme today is the Jewish Feast of Tabernacles, and we're going to hear about that both in the children's talk and in the sermon. It's the last in our series on the Jewish festivals, uh, which has shown us how Christ fulfills God's plans through it, to, to us through these festivals. It's been all about Christ, that's what we've been learning about. And a reminder for us to keep our eyes on him. He is our hope. He is working out his plans and his purposes, both now and in the future. The both now and not yet that I think we'll be hearing about. He is where history is going. His kingdom is being established. So let's pray together now. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we are in your presence together this morning and we worship you and give you thanks and praise. Lord, at a time when we might be tempted to despair and think of all the things that we can't do, help us to give thanks for all that we can do in you, Lord. Thank you that we can gather together at the same time to keep our eyes on you to hear you speak life over us, Lord, and to receive your peace and love, to know the hope that only you can bring, Lord, and then to be able to give that hope to others and give the reason for that hope that we have. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we do lay before you now our concerns and our, and our anxious thoughts. We lay before you our, our intercessions for others, Lord, for others that we know and that we love and that we're concerned about. We lay those um, at your feet, Father. We ask for you to speak truth into our hearts. Lord, may we receive your Gilgal that Dave was speaking about during the week, that our fear and the oppression might be rolled away, Lord, as we come to your presence today. Lord, as your gathered people, send your spirit afresh upon us this morning um, and for this new week that's ahead of us. We want to be your people who love and serve. We want to build your kingdom with you both now and in the future, that we would know that sense of justice and joy that your kingdom brings that peace and the relief of following you, Father. May each one of us know that today and in the week ahead. So Lord, we pray you'd comfort us, but we also pray that you would challenge us, Father, and allow us, Lord, to be content, even in these circumstances, Lord, or maybe especially in these circumstances, that we'll know you, we can do all things through you who strengthens us. And we pray that specifically too for our pastors, Tim and Dave, and our church staff, that they would be content and that they too would know they can do all things through you, Lord. Give them the energy to keep going and may we encourage them as we build your kingdom together, Father. Meet with us now, Lord, then I pray. Change us, mould us and shape us into your likeness so we can work with you to build your kingdom. In Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Well, this morning we are going to have more sung worship with Andy and Emma Mitchell. The kids' slot's going to be with Mark Ferguson today, our children's worker. And remember, there is Kids Church online once again, through Church Suites or through the website. Pastor Dave will be welcoming new people into church membership. And then Dave's going to be preaching on the Feast of Tabernacles. The service is recorded and will be on YouTube for you to watch again or for you to share with other people. Um, so feel free to have your video on or off, but remember the service is recorded. At the end, when the recording is finished, we'll have our normal time to be able to chat and greet each other. So let's come to our first part of sung worship now with two songs. Let's turn our hearts to God. It sounds to me like we're all having 
quite different experiences of lockdown. But for this hour, we can enjoy that shared experience of worshipping God together. We may not be in the same place, but we're together in the same time. And we worship a God who is not limited by time nor space. So let's worship him together now.
this, Lord, we thank you that we can indeed come to you by your Spirit through Jesus. And we thank you for that incredible gift. That we can do that all together, even though we're not present in one place. And that through Jesus, our worship is acceptable to you. And Lord, we're reminded particularly at this time that most of us are disorientated to some degree in the situation that we're in. Lord, that we live in that tension between the kingdom that you inaugurated and the kingdom that's to come, the already and the not yet. And Lord, we just pray through this next song that in our situations, in the global situation of this pandemic, in the huge tragedy of loss of lives and the disorientation that we might feel ourselves in, Lord, that your kingdom will come, that Jesus, you will come in all those situations. Amen. Amen. Okay, sorry about that. We played those in the, in the wrong order, but God knows and we can worship him just the same. So thank you, Andy and Emma, for that. And thank you for the time and effort that people are putting in to do these recordings for us. I don't know about you, but I feel that um, we can all really be part of the service. We're not just watching something, but we're really part of it. So we thank God for that. Okay, it's time for the younger members of our church now to hear uh, their talk this morning. Um, from Mark and while they're watching parents might want to get the link ready so that they can access the, the Sunday School material that Mark's prepared um, via the website or church suite. Okay over to Mark. Good morning and welcome to MCC Children's Slot this morning. I know a lot of you enjoyed playing games last time so I thought we'll play some more and this is another one of my favourite games. Yeah, it's called Where's Wally? That's why I'm dressed as Wally. In, other country, in some countries, it's called Waldo. Now, if you've never played Where's Wally before, I'll explain it to you. Basically, you've got to find Wally in the picture. So, like a picture like this, which has got lots of characters on, you've got to try and find where Wally is in the picture. Now, this one's fairly difficult because there's a lot of people. But due to social distancing, this is the latest Where's Wally? Yes, not so difficult to find this one, is it? I thought we'd play, my, uh, play our own. This one is our fireplace in the lounge and Wally is somewhere on it. So if you'd like to have a look around and I'll give you a little while just to have a look, see if you can find Wally and then I'll tell you where Wally is, okay? Yes, you found him. He's in the top right hand corner of the mantelpiece on that uh, next to the figurines of the mother and child. So uh, well done for finding that. You know, Wally sometimes can feel lonely uh, being on his own and we can feel lonely sometimes being on our own. But we've got to remember that God is with us. So we're never alone. You know, there's a book in the Bible called Hebrews. No, it's not about a man who makes tea, Hebrews. Yeah, but it mentions that God will never leave us or forsake us. So we can remember that in these difficult times. We can also remember that Christ is the rock. So as we play rock, paper, scissors, we know that Christ is the rock in which we can depend. With a rock, it's firm, um, it's unmovable, it's, it's unbreakable, it's, it's firm and sure. And we know we can build our lives on the rock, Jesus. I thought we'd play another game called Rock, Paper, Scissors. Now, if you've never played this before, I don't know where you've been for the last five years or so, but basically you have to decide whether you're going to play as a rock, paper or scissors. OK, and well, what we're going to do is we're going to go one, two and then decide. OK, and how we're going to do this, if, if I beat you, you're out and you have to fold your arms. If you beat me, you're still in. And if you choose the same as me, you're also still in. OK. So let's have a go. One, two. So if you've chosen paper or rock, you're still in. If you've chosen scissors, you're out. Okay, hopefully you've got the idea now. So I'll have another go. One, two, three. Again, if you've chosen scissors, you're out. One, two, 
So if you've chosen rock this time, you're out. If you've chosen paper or scissors, you're still in. One, two, three. So if you've chosen paper, you're out. If you've chosen scissors or rock, you're still in. One, two. So if you've chosen rock, you're out. One, two. If you've chosen paper, you're out. If you've chosen scissors, you're out. If you've chosen scissors again, you're out. And that's the final one. So if you've still in, you've done very well and you've won. Now we're going to watch a video a bit about the tabernacle and it's like a tent. I've never been camping. No, Wally's never been camping either. So let's see what it's all about. The Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot. The Feast of Tabernacles is the seventh and final appointed time found in Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23, Yahweh said, Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, On the fifteenth of this seventh month is the Feast of Booths for seven days to the Lord. Verse 42, you shall live in booths for seven days, so that your generations may know that I had the sons of Israel live in booths when I brought them out from the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So what exactly is this tabernacle? It's a booth or a small hut, a temporary dwelling place. The Hebrew word for booths is Sukkot. The first mention of Sukkot in the Bible is in Genesis 33 verse 17. And Jacob journeyed to Sukkot and built for himself a house and made booths for his livestock. Therefore, the place is named Sukkot. Once Israel was in the Promised Land, this day was known as the great gathering of all their crops. Deuteronomy 16. You shall celebrate the Feast of Booths seven days after you have gathered in from your threshing floor and your wine vat, and you shall rejoice in your feast. This last appointed time of the year is for everyone, a week of coming together rejoicing and having a feast. So what does Sukkot represent when we look at Yeshua? When Yeshua has his second return, the Feast of Tabernacles will be the great gathering of his people from around the world, coming back to the Promised Land, the Kingdom of God. Also, after the Kingdom is established, all the outside nations will be required to come to the New Jerusalem every year to celebrate this appointed time. It's all prophesied in Zechariah. Zechariah 8.22 So many peoples and mighty nations will come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to entreat the favor of the Lord. Zechariah 14.16 Then it will come about that any who are left of all the nations that went against Jerusalem will go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to celebrate the Feast of Booths. Now let's conclude the Feast of Tabernacles. First of all, Sukkot is the seventh and last appointed time found in Leviticus 23. Second, we stay in booths for a week in remembrance of how God had Israel stay in booths while they were in the wilderness. Third, when they were established in the Promised Land, this was a time of harvesting crops and having a week-long feast. Finally, today we look forward for the return of the Messiah, as this will be the second great gathering of His people, the Great Harvest, to the permanent home. New Jerusalem, and a feast awaits us with the Messiah and the Father. I thought we'd finish this morning by having an action song. We haven't had an action song for a few weeks, so I thought it'd be good to have an action song. You can all join in and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy this. Okay, thank you. Here it comes. Okay, just warm up your shoulders a little bit. That's brilliant. It's a bit of bass guitar, I think. Play along with me. A bit of air guitar. I think we need a bit of acoustic guitar as well. Why don't you play along? Very good. Fantastic. Now we're going to start some jumping up and down. You ready? Let's here we go. I'm going to jump up and down. going to spin right around. going to praise your name forever. I'm going to shout out loud. going to deafen the crowd. going to send my praise to heaven. I'm going to jump up and down. going to spin right around. going to praise your name forever. I'm gonna shout out loud, gonna deafen the crowd, gonna send my praise to heaven. I gotta see you running on the spot. I will run this race and I will never stop. I follow. 
Such a lot when you got not a lot. What? Be happy. Let's go ahead and see jump. Jump up and down, gonna spin right around, gonna praise your name forever. I'm gonna shout out loud, I'm gonna deaf on the crowd, gonna send my praise to heaven. I'm gonna jump up and down, gonna spin right around, gonna praise your name forever. I'm gonna shout out loud, gonna deaf on the crowd, gonna send my praise to heaven. Better run it, you ready? I will run this race and I will never stop. I'll follow Jesus till the day I drop. I can do all things through as He strengthens me. When you got such a lot, when you got not a lot, what? Be happy! Try this. Go one way. And then back the other way. And then try a twist. It didn't go down. Half it's coming up again. It's a bit light. Oh, I'll run this race and I will never stop. I'll follow Jesus till the day I stop. Oh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you got such a lot, when you got not a lot, what? Be happy. Be happy. Big finish, play the drums with me. Brilliant. Well done, guys. When's it end? Somewhere, eh? Well done. Well, thank you so much, Mark. And thank you for those of you who are doing the actions. That was very entertaining. Um, just a couple of quick uh, notices about things that are coming up. If we could have the alpha slide, Mark. Um, there is an online Zoom alpha course that's going to be starting. Um, here are the details for it. So it's starting on the, the 14th of May. Um, more details can be obtained through the Alpha Harrogate website that's there on the screen. Maybe you could invite someone. Or maybe you'd like to find out more um, about Christianity yourself. And this might be a great way of doing that. So go to that website and you'll find out all the information. And let's pray for that as well, that God would speak to people during this time. Also um, coming up um, a week on Tuesday, um, Killing Hall Home Group are organising an MCZ Zoom quiz night for us. So Mark Turner and Debbie Knight are organising this. This is Tuesday the 12th of May at 8 o'clock, so during home group time. The teams are going to be based on our home groups, so ask your home group leader for more information. If you're not in a home group, don't worry, um, you can join a, a group for the evening. You're not going to get out of it that easily. So do contact Debbie and she'll assign you to a group to have a team um, for that evening. I'm sure there's more information going to be coming out um, about that as well. So do check your church emails, listen to the updates that Tim and Dave do each week, as well as the devotionals to stay in touch. Okay, over to Dave now, and he's going to welcome um, some new people into church membership. Hey, good morning, everybody. Lovely to see you. Everyone can hear me all right? Hope so. Yes, um, that was wonderful. Yeah, I love the actions. And come and sit. <laughs> come on. Come, come your life. <laughs> My wife just ran away because it went to us. Um, she's back. Um, so today we were going to welcome in some new members, but I've just had a text from Jackie Reed saying her internet is down. So she hasn't been able to join us this morning. So Jackie Reed, who's the um, senior support worker at Bramall House, connected with Horizon Life Training. Uh, Jackie was going to come in as a member today, but unfortunately we'll have to do that another time. Um, I was looking forward to that, though Jackie's amazing. She's a fireball. Uh, and I'm really glad to have her with us. But also delighted to be welcome, welcoming in Mark and Shua Turner. So if we can go to Shua's um, screen, uh, we should be able to see Mark and Shua. Well known now, there they are. Hi. And um, 
morning. And so it would be great just to, um, for you guys to tell us a little bit about, you know, why you think God has brought you to MCC, what you love about the church, what is God doing through your lives at the moment? Over to you guys. Okay, well, well I'll start. Well, good, good morning, everybody. Um, so so we, we moved up to Harrogate um, last Easter time because I uh, was starting a new job um, over at school uh, in Skipton. And we, we've come up a couple of times looking for houses um, and things kind of just around Christmas time. And we, we'd um, come along to MCC um, one time um, at the suggestion of my dad, actually, who suggested it might, might be a good church for us to, 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 to come and have a look at. Um, and, and when we moved up, I think we, we sort of had a plan to, to try out several different um, churches and kind of um, pray and decide what the, what the right one was um, for us. Um, and I think that the things that we were really looking for, we really want, wanted somewhere that had really solid Bible basis um, around values and, and, and teaching. Um, we wanted somewhere that, um, you know, kind of saw just beyond the, the, the church as a group of people um, kind of coming together, but also um, those connections outward uh, into, into the local community. Um, and, and we also want somebody uh, somewhere that um, our son could grow up because we've got we've got a son Hezekiah who's who's just turned one. Um, so we really wanted somewhere where, where he would be part of the, the church community as well and would be um, you know getting getting some really solid um, teaching, but also a, where, where he could could grow up in a really strong um, Christian community. Um, so as I said, we had plans that we were going to visit um, quite a few different churches. Um, but I think the sort of first week we moved up, we thought, well, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to, to MCC. And then, then the following week, we were, well, actually, let's, let, let, let's go there again. I think we really strongly felt that this was um, the church where God had, had called us to. Um, you know, everything we were looking for, we have absolutely found here. Um, and we've really felt um, a big part of the community. And people have been very, very welcoming. So sort of moving to, to the area and, you know, the only people we really knew here were, were my parents. Um, has actually been a real blessing for us in terms of um, settling in and just feeling really supported and really part of a, of a really strong Christian community. So, yeah. And, um yeah, I feel everything that, that he just said, and I'm led in addition that, you know, um, it was, you know, trusting God to lead you to the church is just, just so perfect because I um, didn't realize when we committed ourselves to that this was our, going to be our home church, um, all of the connectedness and all of the sense of community that we would experience there because being a new mom and not knowing anybody in the new area, um, you know, what I thought was going to be an incredibly lonely time. Just, I didn't experience any of that just because of all of the, the great things that I could get plugged into at MCC. Um, I go to a great um, H2H heart to heart Bible study on Tuesdays uh, with other women and um, getting connected with the toys and tots and um, our home group. And it's just, it was it's amazing just to, to be able to have that so quickly moving somewhere new um just that feeling of church family um and just high level of engagement from everybody in the church so um yeah so that was um that was just a just another blessing choosing the church yeah that's wonderful that's really really good to hear guys so mark you're the head of of academy at skipton um skipton girls high school isn't that right yeah and of course yeah so we're, we're, we're very glad to have you with us. And that's a, a really important job you're doing there too on the front line. And we want to very much cover you in prayer for that uh, during this time as well of the um, lockdown and everything. I know you're still working very much with the school. Uh, and of course, Shua, you're doing an amazing job as our new youth coordinator. So thank you for your energy and effort and all that you're pouring into this role. Um, and thank you, Mark, for supporting your wife in this role as well. Fantastic. So um, I also picked up in my conversations with you, Mark, uh, that you're gifted, you're gifted musically. So um, you mentioned piano and keyboard. So I'm looking to our worship team to maybe give him a trial out and see how good he is. And uh, who knows, we might see you on a keyboard um, in some time in the future. That would be great. Okay, I'm just going to pray a blessing over you and I welcome you into the church. So it's great to have you as part of our family. Even in lockdown, we are growing. So, um, so let's just pray and pray an anointing over you. Father, I thank you for Mark and Shua. 
I thank you that you directed their steps to MCC. I thank you that you called them by name and that you've joined them to our family for a time such as this, for this season. I thank you for all the investment that Shua is bringing into our young people's lives. Bless her and anoint her with creativity in that, Father, with stamina, with insight, with teamwork, with everything she needs, Lord. Equip her in Jesus' name and help us to fully support her and run the race with her well. And Father, we thank you for Mark and his role as a head. We ask your Holy Spirit to be with him in Jesus' name, giving him wisdom for every day, Monday to Friday, and also weekends. He's often busy. We pray your Holy Spirit just inspires him and again gives him stamina and gives him the wisdom that he needs for the decisions he has to make each day. But Father, as, as I prayed for this couple, um, I just felt a couple of passages from Ezekiel and from Isaiah. Ezekiel 22. God has called you as a couple to stand in the gap at a time such as this, to stand in the gap for young people. Mark as the head of the academy, uh, Shua for our young people here at MCC. But he's called you to stand in the gap and intercede for them. So I pray an anointing over you for that. And I also pray Isaiah 58, where it talks about you will rebuild the ruins. You will restore homes. You will be called repairers of the breach. And I speak that out over you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome to MCC. I think that's me. I'm going to hand back to, to Ruth. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. And welcome to, to Mark and Shira as well. We're going to worship again in just a moment with Andy and Emma. When we're in our building, we invite people to come at the end of the service for prayer under the cross. And we still invite you, if something's touched you in the sermon, or if you have a question or something you want to connect with, then please do contact Pastor Dave or Pastor Tim during the week to talk to them or to be prayed for, or maybe contact your, your home group leader as well. So please remember that uh, it's still available. So let's worship again now. Um, through the song. Thank you, Andy and Emma. Good morning. <laughs> Son of my 
just stay in that place of worship and prayer as we prepare our hearts to hear what Dave has brought for us this week. Let's pray. Your kingdom will know no end. Your kingdom, power and authority. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray you would open our hearts and our minds now to receive from you. Let's ask ourselves, what is God speaking over us today? Father, may you speak life and hope into each of our lives. Lift our eyes this morning, Lord, above our surroundings and our circumstances. Lift our eyes above the horizon so we can see that big picture of you working out your plans and purposes and building your kingdom, Lord. Speak to us now, I pray. Amen. Over to Dave. Thank you. Well, good morning. Nice to see you. Welcome, MCC, from my side as well. I can see you all out there. Welcome to those in your pyjamas. Yes, you in the corner. <laughs> Look, everybody's looking to see who's in their pyjamas. I see you. And those with their coffee cups. You're all very, very welcome. Praise the Lord. We are in interesting times, aren't we? Who would have thought? You know, even a couple of months ago, if you'd said to me, COVID-19, I'd have raised an eyebrow and maybe said back to you, is that a planet in Star Trek or something? Or if you said to me, Corona, I would have thought of the beer. But, you know, who would have thought we'd be where we are today? But God is still on the throne and we need to take comfort in that, encouragement from that. God is with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. And that's what I really want to focus on today. Today's topic is on the Feast of Tabernacles. And the idea from, from that that I want to pull out is let's keep the big picture in mind. Tabernacles is the end goal. It's the end result. It's where history is going. I'm going to unpack that in a second. But I believe God wants to say to us this morning, MCC, let's keep the big picture in mind. When we have the big picture of what God is doing, where history is going, we can more easily overcome the obstacles and difficulties that we find ourselves in, the quagmires and the bogs that we come across, whether it's economic difficulties, whether it's stress and worries about bills and mortgages, whether it's, it's um, mental health issues around loneliness or isolation, whether it's physical health issues about dealing with the virus or just other things that are affecting you physically, the Lord is with us. And when we keep our eyes on him, on Jesus and lift it up, he will give us the strength to get through this. Amen. He is with us and he is for us. Now, we've been going through some of the main feasts and seeing how Jesus fulfills them. And it's really important that we keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus through this whole thing. We saw a few weeks ago how Jesus fulfilled Passover. He died at the time the lambs were being sacrificed as the Passover lamb. Amen. He became the, the Passover sacrifice for us. And I think it's a really valid spiritual application during this pandemic to remember that and to say, Lord, you're the Passover lamb, just as the old Israelites put the blood on their doorposts so we stand under the cross of Christ and his wood becomes the doorpost if you like and the blood on the wood represents his sacrifice for us so that the angel of death will pass over that this pandemic will pass over so I pray the blood of Christ over the doorposts of my heart in Jesus name and I hope you do too that's fundamental that's the primary thing but I also pray the blood of Christ over the doorposts of our home, over my family, over my workplace. You can do the same over your business, over everything connected with you. We are under the blood of Christ. And that's not to say that we are super spiritual and don't take common sense measures. Of course we do. We, we play our part to safeguard ourselves and others. But beyond that, at a deep covenantal spiritual level, we come under the blood of Christ. Christ is our Passover lamb. Amen. So if you ears to hear and eyes to see, you can pull out spiritual truths from these feasts for today as well. Then we looked at how Christ uh, is the first fruits from the dead. Hallelujah. His resurrection. And I think that's really important for us to remember during this pandemic as well. God's last word, his ultimate word is not death, but life. Amen. <laughs> life. God speaks life over us. The bonds of death could not keep Jesus down. He rose from the dead. And God says to us, MCC, this pandemic is not the end. It's not the final word. My final word over you and over my creation is life. Hallelujah. And then we looked at um, last week how the coming Feast of Trumpets, Christ will fulfill that when he resurrects us and we rise to meet him with all 
all the saints of all the ages and meet him in the air and go on to our heavenly reward. Hallelujah. That's not the end. It's part of the end, but it's not the end. But the point there is we are invited to participate in God's resurrection life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, this creation is groaning. Yes, this creation is suffering. And God will have to let this creation in some ways ultimately die so he can resurrect it all. But what he does with us, he will do with the whole of creation. So trumpets is this idea that there is more to come. And God's last word, not just for his own son, but for all of us and the whole of creation is life, life, life. Hallelujah. Resurrection life and power. And so today I want to continue that theme and say, okay, Okay, this is the big last feast. It's the seventh feast. Uh, it represents the climax, the perfection of God's plans. What is tabernacles about? Well, very simply, it's about a few things. It's about the king coming. Hallelujah. So trumpets is when we meet him in the air, but that's not the end. He comes back to the earth to establish his kingdom. So the king comes, the kingdom is here. Thy kingdom come. We pray in the Lord's prayer often. Thy kingdom come. The king is here. The kingdom is established. The nations are gathered in. It's harvest time. Hallelujah. And God dwells among his people. And that's what I really want to get across to you. God has such a heart to dwell amongst us. Now, let me put out some theology. Proper biblical theology is not this escapism that we're just trying to escape a troubled world, although we feel like that sometimes. Proper biblical eschatology is heaven comes to earth and transforms the earth and glorifies the earth and resurrects the earth and God makes all things new. Hallelujah. So tabernacles is about this idea. The kingdom is here. Jesus is here. The kingdom is here. The saints are resurrected and with him and God is making all things new. So um, it's going to be a time of abundance. And I just want to read a couple of verses from Revelation. Tabernacles is pointing towards this in Revelation 21. Tabernacles is like a springboard into this reality that is coming, a higher, an upgraded, supernatural upgraded reality that is coming. And John says this, And I perceive the holy city, New Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I hear a loud voice out of the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle, the tabernacle of God is with mankind, and he will be tabernacling with them. And they will be his people, and he will be their God. And he will brush away every tear from their eyes. Isn't that beautiful? And death will be no more. There'll be no more pandemics or lockdowns. Death will be no more, nor mourning, nor clamor, nor misery. They will be no more, for the former things have passed away. And he who sits on the throne says, Behold, I am making all things new. Amen. So tabernacles is about God upgrading our reality. So the veil of death is beginning to lift. The curse is beginning to lift. The produce, it's about harvest time, that the harvest is coming in, the sheaves are coming in. So the produce of the field, the field, the produce of the vineyards, um, the produce of the orchards, it's all there. The granaries are overflowing, the oil presses are overflowing, the wine presses are full to capacity. It's a time of joy and celebration and abundance. Tabernacles represents paradise restored. Hallelujah. Can I get that into your minds and hearts today? And that God is coming to dwell amongst us. And I think that is so important that we keep this big picture in front of us. Where is history heading? It's going to tabernacles. Where is the omega of history? It's tabernacles. God is coming to dwell amongst us. Now, I believe Jesus Christ is the Messiah of God. Amen. He is the chosen one. He is the King of Israel. And he will be returning with us, his people, to set up this kingdom. Hallelujah. And the scripture says, very clearly it's a prophetic line he will establish his throne in Jerusalem on the throne of David the archangel Gabriel said that to Mary he will sit on the throne of his father David hallelujah he will rule over all the nations think of Psalm 2 I have set my king my son on on my throne on Mount Zion and I will give him the nations that's a reference to tabernacles I will give him the nations as an inheritance hallelujah and also think of examples Isaiah chapter 2 where it says that um, the nations will come to Israel and worship or come to Jerusalem to worship and um, uh, they will beat their swords into plowshares. That's what it's about. They will learn the law of the Lord. Jesus will teach the nations. He will rule over the nations. And this is a wonderful thing. Tabernacles is not just saying, 
Our God reigns. It's saying Jesus Christ is Lord of all and every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's what Tabernacles is also about. Every nation comes under his lordship. Every nation comes in. The harvest represents the nations coming in to worship God. Hallelujah. So they will beat their swords into plowshares. There will be justice. There will be righteousness. There will be peace. He is called Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Hallelujah. It's just so wonderful. Think of Isaiah 11, where it says, you know, the wolf and the lamb will lie down together. This is again, harmony coming into creation. Creation getting a supernatural upgrade, carnivorous um, disharmony being removed. The wolf and the lamb will lie down together. A little child will lead them and the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. I'm just so excited about tabernacles because it, it's the end goal. It's where we're going. It's what it's all about. And uh, if you keep that in mind, it can help us overcome. You know, um, the nations are really important to God. He holds them in the, in the palm of his hand. That's why we also send out mission partners around the world. It's not just about our little bit in Harrogate or the Harrogate district or even Great Britain or United Kingdom. It's about all the nations knowing the glory of God. Um, you know, during the Feast of Tabernacles, originally from the Old Testament, they would slaughter 70 bullocks during the whole week. It was a week-long festival. They would slaughter 70 bullocks. You might say, what on earth is that about? Well, it was about atonement. It was about covering. It was about offering the nations up to God. 70 in the scriptures is a symbolic number for all the nations of the earth. Where does that come from? That comes from Genesis 10 and the table of nations, the descendants of Noah were meant to be 70, but it also comes from the Tower of Babel. Do you remember that one nation, one language at that point, and they tried to, to build a massive tower as a form of rebellion against God, because he'd said to spread out and separate, and they said, no, we're just gonna stick together and become an empire. And God came down and separated them out. And tradition is he separated them out into 70 nations and languages. And so that's why 70, 70 bullocks were slaughtered in the sense of we atone for God's kingdom comes over and reigns over all the nations of the earth, all 70, which is a symbolic number. And that's why in Luke chapter 10, if you know your scriptures, Luke chapter 10, Jesus sent out 70 disciples. He sent out 70 apostles before him. And that is symbolic of his people, including us today in our generation, going out before him to prepare the way of the Lord. He said, go and prepare the places I will come to. And they sent them out. So 70 disciples going out, say, basically saying, all the nations of the earth will come under the Lordship of Jesus. All the nations of the earth, I will come among them all. And so tabernacles is the harvest coming in, the nations coming in, and all the nations coming in to know the Lord, to walk in his ways and to have peace. Hallelujah. And then Genesis 12 is finally fulfilled. Do you remember Genesis 12, where God called Abraham and he said, I will make you a mighty nation. I will bless you. And all through you and through your seed, which becomes Christ, through you and through your seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. That's the fulfillment. That promise from thousands of years ago reaches its climax in tabernacles when Jesus Christ returns and establishes his kingdom over all the earth. Hallelujah. That's where we're heading now. Big picture stuff. It's so important. So I just want to um, give you a, a story, an illustration around that. Christopher Wren, Christopher Wren, the great architect who built St. Paul's, of course. One day while they were busy with St. Paul's, he disguised himself and he decided to go out among the stone cutters and the masons and just to ask them some questions. And so he came among the workers and they didn't recognize him. And he came to the first uh, stone cutter and he said, what are you doing? And this stone cutter looked up and said, oh, I'm busy earning my daily bread. This is my job. I do it you know, to put food on the table. Okay, that's fine. And he went on and he found another man and he said, stone cutter, what are you doing? And this man said, look, I'm a very specialized and skilled mason and I'm making a very specialized stone that will just have its, its own place that it needs to fit into. And that's what I'm focusing on. Oh, well, that's great, said Christopher Wren in disguise. And he moved on and found a third stone mason. 
And he said, and what are you doing? And this man had a joy about him. And this man had a glint in his eye that was different. And this man looked up and he put his eyes to heaven. And he said, I am building a cathedral for the glory of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am building a cathedral for the glory of God. And Christopher Wren looked up and smiled at him and said, you've got it. You understand it. You've got the big picture. That's where we're going. That's what it's all about. I'm building a cathedral for the glory of God. And I believe MCC, in the midst of the trials and the difficulties that we're in and the suffering that's going on, God says to us, lift up your head and see the big picture. Lift up your head and have a cathedral mindset. Lift up your head and think of the end game, tabernacles. God will dwell among us. He will tabernacle. He will tent. He will set up his abode permanently among us. He will be our God and we will be his people. That's where we're going. And that can give us the energy, the zest, the perspective to overcome the obstacles and difficulties that we meet. I know we're going through a kind of valley of Baca at the moment. Baca, you know, a place of weeping, a valley of weeping. Um, but, you know, the scripture says in Psalm 84, those who come through the valley of Baca, God's people, they the blessings come with them and they can transform that place. And it becomes with the autumn rains, which is a reference to tabernacles, the autumn rains, the autumn harvest, it becomes a place of springs and pools of water. In other words, abundance and provision and refreshing. And God wants us to be that type of people. We are a tabernacle people. God dwells with us too, amen. And we can spread that joy and that hope around. Now, just to close this segment, I want us to, to bring it down a notch and just have a few moments of reflection, a few moments of meditation, a few moments of prayer. We can do silence too. I can do silence too. I think it's important to say, Lord, you've just been bombarding me through David there with an awful lot of stuff about tabernacles. The king is coming, the kingdom is established, the harvest comes in, the nations come in. You are dwelling amongst us. That's the end goal. That's the big picture. That's cathedral thinking. What's my response to that? And I just want us to take a couple of moments. I'm going to pause, pause this video. Uh, just take a couple of moments to write your prayer, your response, your meditation, your reflection in the chat box. So just click on the chat on the bottom of your screen and just do it to everybody and so we can all see and put in your, your prayer, your response, whether it's, Lord, give me eyes that see the end goal. Oh Lord, thank you that you are coming to this earth and not, a, not abandoning us. Thank you that you have hope for this planet. Thank you that heaven and earth will join together. Whatever it is, Thank you that all the nations will come to know you as the true Lord and God. Just now, as you're, I can see people are already starting to do it, just put, put your prayers in there. And we'll have a few minutes silence just to, to do that. Amen. <laughs> Okay, that's lovely. I can see there's been a series of comments there. Thank you so much for participating in that. I'll come back to those at the end. Amen. Now, just to finish off this talk really today, a couple more points about tabernacles. I get so excited about tabernacles. I find it amazing. <laughs> a couple more points though that I think God has been speaking to me through it. 
And that is um, part of the imagery around tabernacles, the coming kingdom of God, is that of a wedding banquet. It's that of a wedding feast because um, we collectively represent the people of all generations and all ages from Adam and Eve all the way through till today and, and until the kingdom comes, all the believers of all ages represent the bride of Christ, the bride of the Messiah. And so it's a wedding feast between the Messiah and his people. It's a spiritual union, it's a spiritual communion, it's a spiritual coming together, and it's fantastic. Um, so for example, in Matthew 22, Jesus said this, the kingdom of God is like the kingdom of God is like when, a, when a, a father, a king, prepares a wedding banquet for his son. The kingdom of God is like a king who prepares a wedding banquet for his son. That's a reference to tabernacles. When the wedding feast, the wedding supper, the marriage supper of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, will take place and there'll be much rejoicing and much celebration. And one of the words I felt God was saying to us during this time of lockdown and so on, is not to let the devil steal our joy, amen? We're a people of joy, it's part of the fruit of the Spirit. Don't let the devil steal that. And one of the ways to prevent that is to think again of the bigger picture, to think of what is coming, to have a foretaste in your heart already through the Holy Spirit of that joy and that celebration, that wedding feast when it comes, amen. So I think we're about building community at this time. In a wedding feast, people sit together, there's joy, there's conversation, there's interaction. Uh, you know, there's a lot of one-to-oneness going on. And I think during this time of lockdown, we're not to lose that. As much as possible, we're to reach out. As much as possible, we're to phone a friend. As much as possible, we're to have virtual community. And I know it's all kind of gone online and it's all gone digital and it's not the same. And I'm missing it. I miss physical touch with people. I miss a hug. I miss a handshake. I miss physical eyesight sitting down one-to-one. -one. I miss all of that. In some ways, we're being deprived. It's hard. We're in poverty, relational poverty. But despite all that, think of the wedding feast. Think of what is to come when Tabernacles arrives and let that motivate you to keep reaching out. It's on our wall in the church building. One day we'll get back in there, praise the Lord. It says we are building a community of God's people to love and to serve. We're building a community of God's people. And so keep being inspired through Tabernacles also to reach out. We will be with each other. We will be sitting down. You know, Jesus will drink the fourth cup. Hallelujah. If you were there for um, Oliver Sims' talk on Good Friday, he mentioned the four cups at Passover. And when Jesus inaugurated the new covenant on top of the Passover covenant, and the Passover feast, he, he drank from three cups. And the third cup was the cup of the new covenant in his blood. But he didn't drink the fourth cup. And he says this, it's from Luke's gospel, isn't it? He says, I will not drink from the fruit of the vine again until I drink it with you anew in the kingdom of my father. That's a reference to tabernacles. That's a reference to the kingdom coming when he will sit and he will drink the fourth cup with his bride, the people of God, hallelujah. Think of, again, Luke 13 it is, when Jesus says, uh, it talks about all the saints coming together to have that wedding feast. He says, you know, um, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, people from all the prophets, people from the north, the south, the east and the west, they will all come together. They will all recline at table. That's a reference to tabernacles, to the marriage supper, to the feasting, to the drinking, to the fourth cup. The kingdom is consummated. It is here. Restoration has happened. Hallelujah. It's fantastic. So use that imagery, relational proximity, even now, celebration, joy. To, to reach out and say, that's my norm. Even though it's still to come, I'm gonna make what is coming from the age to come, or at the end of this age as it transitions into the age to come, I'm gonna make that Feast of Tabernacles a norm now. That, that, the, that the not yet becomes in some ways a type of already. And I'm gonna use that to inspire me to reach out and connect with people and say, we're all the bride of Christ, let's relate. So be inspired by that. I think it's wonderful. So relational proximity, having joy, celebrating. And then also a wonderful thing about the wedding feast is not just the congregation, if you like, the audience, the collective gathering of the saints that comes together to celebrate a wedding, but the groom and the bride themselves as an individual couple. Think of that imagery. And even today in a Jewish wedding, they will get married in an Orthodox setting under a chuppah a kind of gazebo, a kind of tent covering. And it's very 
uh, similar in form and shape to a tabernacle. And in fact, the chuppah is used in Hebrew thinking as a, as a symbol again, as another layer of imagery to tabernacles, because tabernacles represents marriage coming together, groom and bride. And so a groom and a bride stand under a chuppah, which is a type of tabernacle. And that's where they exchange their vows. It's, it's a powerful place, a, a place of solemnity, a place of dedication, a place of commitment, a place of deep love and, and, and willing to give and serve and and just the joy of that that comes, that's under the chuppah. And so during this time of lockdown, I believe God is also saying to us, MCC, not just don't lose your joy, not just don't give up meeting together as virtually or even through cyberspace, whatever way we can. Think of the relational proximity of a wedding, um, but have that spiritual, um, spiritual intimacy with the Lord himself. See Jesus as the perfect groom. He's altogether lovely. Have that spiritual oneness, that spiritual desire. I am my beloved and he is mine. Now, it's not physical. <laughs> Don't need to go off on that rabbit hole. It's spiritual. It's a spiritual union with the Messiah. It's a spiritual union with God's people. It's a spiritual union with our Lord Jesus Christ, which is beautiful and wonderful and fulfills you. That's what we were made for, made to know him, made to worship him, made to be one with him. So think of yourself under the chuppah with the Spirit of God, with Christ, with the Trinity even, and have that deep relationship. So Part of the hoopa um, symbolism was that it represented the groom's home. And the groom would invite the bride under his hoopa into his home to establish a home, to build up their home, their, their house, their name. Isn't that wonderful? And that's what Christ has done with us. He's invited us, he's chosen us to come in, into his home that he's prepared, that he's prepared for us. I go to prepare a place for you. And then I will go and I will come back and I'll bring you to be in the place where I am. Now, of course, as we read from Revelation, that's the new Jerusalem he's preparing. And the new Jerusalem comes from heaven to earth. The earth will be transfigured and transformed and restored in tabernacles. Hallelujah. Tabernacles is a springboard into the age to come and the fullness of that. So Christ is our groom. So think of the hoopa, think of the joy, think of spiritual, spiritual intimacy. And I really believe God is saying to us at this time, don't waste the time. This came up in the 21 days of prayer. This came up in the 24 hour prayer cycle. Redeem the time. Use this time spiritually that you have with God to get close to God, to know him, to to have your life pruned, to be like a bride preparing for her wedding day. Get, the, get that desire in your heart to be ready for the Lord like the five wise virgins who when he comes are there and ready with oil, Holy Spirit pouring out of them, glowing inside them. Isn't that wonderful? And the last imagery from this part of the wedding feast, the wedding banquet, the chuppah, um, is the idea of, of dance and celebration. Uh, the word for festival in Hebrew is chag, and the root word of that is means to dance in a circle. And so, of course, at weddings, there's lots of dancing, and of course, in Hebrew tradition, even the Jews today, they will often dance in a circle. And we have the same type of tradition in folklore dancing, in Scottish dancing, in Cayley dancing, barn dancing. We often dance in groups and in circles. It's that idea of community being together. But the idea that God invites us into his dance. And so a tabernacle is just this idea of my cup runs over. I'm drinking the fourth cup with the Lord. There is joy. There is Abraham. There is Isaac. There is the heroes and heroines of the faith. There is Mary Magdalene. There is Gideon. There is all. The, there is Hannah. There is all the people I ever wanted to meet, not just from Bible times, but throughout church history. There is Martin Luther. There is. There is everybody. You know. There is whatever hero you have, Hudson Taylor, there they are. I want to talk and meet with them. There's Amy Carmichael. There's, there's all of them. We'll all sit down and have that joy, but we'll also dance together. You know, I love that song. I'm the Lord of the dance, said he. Jesus is, in a sense, the Lord of the dance. He brings us in to his joy and, and his wonderful kingdom. Amen. So I just want to finish with that. This, this talk today has been about seeing the big picture through the trials, through the tribulation, through the, the current crisis that we're in. Don't let it bog you down. Have cathedral thinking. The kingdom is coming. That's the, that's the omega point. It's coming our way. Um, there will be joy. There will be a wedding feast. I'll see the saints. Let's reach out in relational proximity to each other. Let's have joy. Don't let the devil steal it from you. Have that spiritual intimacy with Jesus Christ. 
that he's calling us to at this time. Amen. God has always wanted to dwell with us, whether it was when in the Garden of Eden he walked with Adam and Eve, which I'll maybe touch about, talk about later, because that's a wonderful imagery. Whether it was through the tabernacle in the wilderness, build me a tabernacle, I want to dwell with you. Whether it was through Jesus coming himself, John's gospel, and the word became flesh and dwelt, or in the Hebrew, tabernacled amongst us. He pitched his tent amongst us. We beheld his glory. Or whether it's the current situation where his spirit lives in us, and we are the tent, we are the tabernacle of God. And when the Feast of Trumpets is fulfilled, we will put off this mortal tabernacle and have an immortal one, full of his glory, transformed. Hallelujah. I just can't wait for tabernacles to come. It's, it's shaping my worldview. I hope it's shaping yours. Well, God bless you this week. Much joy and much love. The kingdom is coming. Now, before I hand back to Ruth, I thought it would be good to close with the Lord's Prayer. Why? Because in the Lord's Prayer, there's uh, statements about the coming kingdom at the start and at the end. You think about God's kingdom. And in between, you have elements of God's protection, God's provision, God's pardon. So let's say the Lord's Prayer together, but, uh, you know, really emphasize in your mind as you say it, um, the bits about the kingdom. And so just reach out your hand to the screen and don't cover your face. We still want to see you, but put your hand out to the screen just where you are and we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. I'll lead it. You just speak it out loud in your home. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you. I'll hand back to Ruth now. It's me instead of Ruth. <laughs> I'm just going to finish off uh, the service. Um, but that was great. It was funny watching myself there in video. But, um, but praise the Lord for that. The kingdom is coming. Tabernacles. Praise the Lord. Just looking through the comments. There's been so many comments put on um, in reflection, in the reflection moment there. That was fantastic. Um, let's just remind ourselves of some of them here. Lord, lift our eyes above the horizon. Lord, help us be good stewards of your resources. This is what you've written. Thank you, Lord, that you are making all things new. Thank you that you want to tabernacle with us. Thank you, Lord, that you are coming again. Thank you that you are in control despite our circumstances. Please give us all cathedral thinking. Lord, help us to see God's purpose to the very end. Thank you that you've got the whole world in your hands. Wonderful stuff. So thank you for that. Thank you for participating in that moment. Okay, just a couple of notices from me before we come to the final uh, blessing. Uh, a couple of points, uh, points just to remind ourselves of. Uh, one is prayer. We are a people of prayer. God is calling us into a season of prayer still. So our next monthly prayer meeting is on Tuesday, Tuesday the 5th, 8 o'clock. You can find the link through the calendar, through my events on Church Suite. And we'll have our monthly prayer meeting at eight. I'll be leading that. And then um, monthly Bible study on Sunday, the 10th of May. So we've often had a monthly Bible study in the evenings. That will take place Sunday, the 10th, 6.30 p.m. And we'll have Troy, Brother Troy, Troy Fernier. He's now a doctor, Dr. Troy. Um, we'll be taking that, his first Bible study with us, opening up Second Peter. So Sunday, the 10th, um, Bible study, 6.30 and we'll probably have communion as well, too. We'll do it virtually like we did before, holding our elements to the screen, Sunday the 10th. And then, as Ruth mentioned earlier in the service, look out for the home group quiz nights, a virtual quiz night coming up Tuesday the 12th of May. So there'll be an email coming out about that. So watch out for that. It'll be fun to participate. And even if you're not in the home group, you can still take part. Just contact Debbie Knight. And then uh, also on the 16th of May, there's another leadership training seminar. So we have a couple of those each year. And again, Brother Troy uh, will be teaching that seminar just for the leaders in the church. About 50 odd people will get an invite. So look out for that if you're a leader. It'll be on the power of feedback, the power of feedback. Really important as a community of leaders that we develop 
uh, that side of our relationship with each other, the power of feedback. 16th of May. And lastly, for me, I just wanted to highlight again, right now, media. So we sent out an email about this wonderful Christian resource that we have access to now. Um, the link, you can get it through My Church Suite on the menu on the left. Just go down on the menu, you'll see Right Now Media. Click on that, open up your profile. You have access to 20,000 Christian videos on marriage, on Bible studies, on apologetics, loads of stuff for the kids, movies, everything. So do, mix, do make use of this wonderful resource. It's all there for you, Right Now Media. Okay, I'm just going to close with a blessing. And then we'll end the recorded part of our service. So um, just close our eyes and I just pray a blessing over us. Father, I thank you for our time today. I thank you for the worship that we've had, the community we've had. I thank you for the new members coming in. And I thank you for the teaching that we've had to thank you that your kingdom is coming. Your kingdom is coming and no one can stop it. And I just pray, Father God, that will re-energize us the whole idea of tabernacles and your deep desire to dwell with us and not just us, but the whole of creation will be renewed in your presence. And so Lord, I just pray parts of Psalm 121 over us. Now may the Lord keep you from all harm for he will watch over your life. He will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. All right, that ends the recorded part of our service, so the recording will now stop, but it doesn't end our worship. Just before we go into open chat,